Hello people, my name is Uduak Akman. I'm here again today and I want us to look at uh, what I call the training. The training. You know, sometimes a lot of people go through certain things and they don't even have an idea of what they are going through. At the same time, there are some other people that, you know, have an idea of what they are currently going through, but they don't know how to figure out or how to survive this particular period. And that's why we are here to talk about this today. You want to look at the scriptures, all through the scriptures, go out that for anyone that will work with God, God will definitely train. If you look at the life of Abraham, God trained Abraham. Abraham learned obedience, you know, through the things, having to trust, you know, the voice he was hearing and, you know, God coming through for him in different times and different seasons. God trained and Joseph, you know, Joseph was the only one of all his brethren. He's the only one that was dropped into the uh, well without water. He's the, one, he's the only one that was sold to the Ishmaelite. He's the only one that went to the prison. And I've always said that the peculiarity of um, interpretation of dreams was not just um, to Joseph alone. Because the moment Joseph had the dream and told his brethren about the dream, the mid immediately all of them said, are you going to rule over us? Meaning that they could interpret the dream. But the only thing that was peculiar to Joseph was the fact that Joseph could dream. None of his brethren could dream. Joseph took that from, you know, from the father, Jacob. Jacob could dream, could interpret dreams. The same thing with Joseph. He could dream and send them to interpret dreams, but all his brethren also could interpret dreams. The same thing, God trained David. And I've always said that of all the kings in Israel till today, only David, only David has the record of being trained. You know, he had to go through the cave of Adullam, he was ordained the king and he was never uh, the king immediately and he's the only king that is his record is almost 100 percent and that's one thing you need to know that God will always train you know David had to learn you know um, character character training he had to learn leadership training and of course relationship training relationship training he grew up in doing with character training you know he was about going to Nebel's house to destroy the whole of Nebel because he requested for something from Nebel and Nebel didn't grant him. But while he was going, Abigail met him and we can see that in 1 Samuel 25 and of course verse 20 to 26, Abigail met him and pleaded with David and David, you know, because of Abigail turned back, you know, at that particular point David would have had um, blood shed in his hand but Abigail prevented him from doing that. So from, from then on, on onward, he learned character training, also leadership training, 1 Samuel 24 verse 5 he had the opportunity to kill Saul after he had been ordained king and he saw Saul Saul was chasing him he was running away and running around the wilderness and Saul, all of a sudden he saw Saul and as soon as he caught um, Saul's robe his heart smote him and of course his followers were there so they learned that from David that even when you had the opportunity to destroy your enemies it's always good to wait for God's timing so David is the only king you know, that passed through all these processes of all the kings, you know, of all the kings in the kingdom, David learned um, God's training. At the same time also, you know, sometimes we go through certain things in life and some of us are actually understand the fact that, okay, God might be training us, but we don't know how to survive, you know, this particular uh, time of training. If you look at the record, so the, the accounts, you know, in um, Luke chapter 5, one um, verse 1 to 11 you know that was the first time Jesus Christ was going to meet uh, Peter and God told him after Jesus Christ had used his boat and told him um, told him he has caught nothing and Jesus Christ told him launch into the deep you know Peter, Peter caught so much fishes and after that Peter went to his knee told Jesus Christ please depart from me and walk up with new Peter but Jesus Christ told him I'm gonna make you what a fisher of men so Peter went with Jesus Christ but after Jesus Christ died after Jesus Christ died in um, John Chapter 20, you know, they went to the tomb, there was nobody there, they saw discovered that the tomb was empty and they quickly went back and called Peter and Peter came and saw the tomb and saw that the tomb was empty. But in uh, chapter 21 of that same John, Peter said what, I go out fishing and two other disciples followed him and Jesus Christ appeared again in John chapter 21 and said, children, have you any meat? And they looked at them because they had caught nothing. And that's because between the death of Peter and the resurrection of, of um, the death of Jesus Christ, sorry, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Peter did not really know what was going on, what was going to be the next thing. So, um, he, and he had not, he, have, he had not learned how to wait for God's timing. He didn't really understand. So he went back, went to fishing, and he told all true. 
And when Jesus Christ appeared to him, the record says that he didn't even know it was the Lord, it was Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ thrust your net into the right side of the, and they caught so many fishes and they knew immediately that who it was Jesus Christ. So it's called that the account, even though it was about fishing, but there were specific instructions. Specific instructions. The first one was launched into the deep. The second one was launched launch into the right side. So for you to survive this period of training, you must always have the word for the moment. The word for the moment. But before we go into talking about the word for the moment, there's something that a lot of us take for granted. So many times you hear some, you get this nudging, you know, in our spirits. Do not take this particular part, take this part. I've had cases where, you know, when I'm driving and I hear in my spirit, do not take this part, take this part. And every time I disobey the voice I hear in the spirit, I usually regret it. Because sometimes I get to stop, get stuck into the hold up. Or sometimes something, some, some, sometimes some things happen. There was a time I was going to, you know, I was heading for church and I was about to turn into to, uh, to the street of the church and I heard in my spirit on. And hung, and I, I was wondering, but I obeyed the voice. And as soon as I, I hung, I discovered that there was one young man, you know, walking recklessly on the road, and it was just, and I would have probably um, hit, hit him that particular day. So it's always important that we listen, you know, to the voice, the nudging that we hear from our spirit. So sometimes the Holy Spirit comes to us, give us simple instructions. And the moment you obey, you begin to obey those little, little instructions, then it begins to bring, you know, further instructions and now instructions that can actually you know talk about your life talk about your future talk about your destiny but if you refuse to obey those nudges that you've been hearing from your spirit over the time then you god the Holy Spirit will not be able to trust you to actually you know put some responsibilities on you so that is why you see that for you to begin to hear words for the moment you must be able to trust the Holy Spirit over time and begin to trust him then of course it takes faith to also trust him but once you trust and obey those words then you will be able to receive further instructions that can actually prevent or keep you in time of famine in time of difficulties just like the current period we are right now you know it takes you hearing some specific instructions that will keep you in the place where you really need you know to be in, in, in if you look at the account of the children of you know between the Red Sea and Egyptians were actually catching up on them and they were all crying and crying to Moses and Moses said stand still and see salvation of the Lord but he went back to God and what did God tell him? God told him tell the people to what? To go forward. So if Moses did not trust or had not built relationship over time with the Holy Spirit, I'm sure he would have disobeyed the word go forward because forward was Red Sea. It means that if you are going forward, we are heading for destruction. So also, there are so many instructions God is giving to us, but we ignore them because they look so stupid and silly. And so, I, rather than obeying those instructions, we decide to go with what our head is telling us. At the moment, you, what your head is telling you, and your head might be leading you straight to destruction. And so you see that after Moses obeyed God, then because he trusted the dog and God told him, God now gave him further instruction, trust through your staff to direct him. And as soon as he obeyed that, what happened? There was... There was an open door for the children of Israel to actually go through the same Red Sea, but now on the dry path. So, if you do not build the relationship with the Holy Spirit over time, you know to hear his um, word of word of word of the moment. Even though we've been working with God, some of us get too used to God that we fail to realize that for every level, every. Uh, situation we get to in life, we need to go back to God to get instruction of the moment. If you look at the account in John chapter 11, 22 to 26, Jesus Christ came to town and of course to raise Lazarus. But when he met um, Martha, Martha said, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have been dead. Let's quickly look, look, look at the account. Let's look at verse 22 of John chapter 11 to buttress what I'm trying to say. John chapter 11, 22, it says, but I know that even now, whatsoever Thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Look at it. And Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. It means that Martha had 
you know, was exposed to the world. Martha knew God's will, probably. Martha knew, Martha was used to listening to, to God, to the Holy Spirit. He could study the world, he understood the world. But at that particular point, there was a word for this, a word for the now, a word for the season that will actually bring Lazarus up. But Martha did not have that understanding. And that's the one thing that we really need to pay attention to. There's always a word for the season. So in the place of training, now the place what keeps you um, in the place of training and what makes you survive and understand the processes that God actually takes us through is when you begin to obey and trust the voice of the Holy Spirit. They come, you could come in a still small voice. They could come through when you are studying the word. They could come through when you are listening to the message in the office. They could even come as you are listening to this message. They could even come when you are just flipping through your phone, you know, listening to YouTube channels and listening to men of God speaking. God can speak to every heart. God speaks to each and every one of us individually and differently. And that is one thing you need to do, that you need to begin to understand how God speaks to you. Then begin to trust the, those nudges, begin to trust the voice you hear. You know, in the case of Elijah, he spoke to Elijah in a still small voice. Elijah was used to fire because he could call down fire and God will answer. He, could, he was used to storm, he was used to earthquake. But that particular day, for the word for that particular moment, was through a still small voice. A lot of us are missing it because we have failed to realize that we need to go back to God to hear the word for the moment. The word for the moment is what will keep you in this particular time and season. The word for the moment is what will make you survive a challenge. The word for the moment is actually what will make you, you know, to be able to listen and go through the period God wants you to go through before it launches you out, you know, to big things. If you look at those people we mentioned in the Bible, the Moses, the Joseph, the David, if you look at their, the, what, the time they lived, they lived, uh, you know, in an outstanding way, something that we can still relate to at this particular time. And God, each of them, whenever they call upon God, God will always answer them. Why? Because they listen to God. They have learned to obey those little, little instructions they hear from God. And that's one thing you need to do. You cannot afford, you cannot fail to listen to God. There's always a word for the moment. There's always a word for the season. And I pray for you today that your own timing, you will not miss it. In the mighty name of Jesus. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to share this message. And do not forget to subscribe. If this is the first time on speaking to this channel, please sub subscribe and of course hit the bell notification so that each time we will we upload you know messages like this, you will actually you know get to and get to listen to it. God bless you, real good. And before we go, for returning subscribers, I want to say hands on the head. Thank you so much for being there for us. It's been a great blessing. We are always encouraged to do more because we know that you are always waiting for us to bring out the video. God bless you, real good. The name is Uduak Afan. And of course, you can also call me Buff. God bless you, real good. Thank you.